Okay. So, have you had a chance to look at the um, build order yet? Uh, yeah, I have been. Okay, so basically it's just a very typical um, hatch gas pool into your let's let's attack with Ling Bane. Now, are you um, so definitely there will be you know potentially some issues with early pool defense, like learning how to do that um, off a hatch first. So, if you really prefer, you can open up like pool pool then hatchery and gas um, around the same time if you want to be a bit safer um, down the track. But either way, it'll end up in a very similar place to this. So <clears throat> notice we're going to go straight for, um, you know, Baneling Nest with our first 50 gas. We're going to drop our third base around 33, supply, drop an Overlord straight after, and then we build a big pack of Zerglings to do some Ling Bane pressure. However, Never. you're not going to build any drones. We're not going to transition. So you're only focusing on that first part of the build right up to bling bane pressure and then all you're going to do is just keep rallying zerglings and you're just going to keep attacking and attacking and attacking all you're doing is inject build zerglings keep morphing banelings and just keep going okay okay awesome all right this is uh, a generally really when i edge run. first uh generally when i edge first against a zerg uh, and he does uh, 14 14 or 20 12 i have uh, uh, it's difficult for me to hold uh so i tried to uh edge pull gas and it was much better to to hold it oh but okay just try. yeah yeah you can do that that's fine you can go the, the pool before the gas if that helps you out no worries game paused All right, so we let we we'll let him take his time to just fix his hotkeys up quickly. Let me make sure I lock this on the in-game view for people on stream, so when I'm tabbing out, they don't lose their vision of um, the stream and what's going on. And um, for anyone who's just tuning in, there's the build order, um, just linked there in Twitch chat. All right. Game resumed. Okay, so just going to be following that um, hatch gas pool and oh, hatch pool gas, either way, just do that hatch first, yeah, opening, hatch first opening and um, yeah. should be awesome. All right, I just muted my mic temporarily while he goes through the very initial opening stage. Um, so thank you guys for hanging out and being patient. Lost a lot of viewers, unfortunately, due to that Skype issue. Um, 15 minutes of, of nothing or 20 minutes of nothing. And finally, we actually get into some, some more content. Um, so I appreciate you guys who are still hanging out. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we can pick up a few viewers as we go on. But um, I know there's a lot of featured events on TL right now, so it's kind of tough. One, uh, one hour. OK, so ZVZ Diamond Coaching. Then Zerg ladder for the rest of today. Just wanted to make sure I link that on Twitter. And now that we're getting to the point where stuff is going to be happening pretty soon, I will unmute my mic for uh, Giannis to hear me. Yep. Sorry, I just unmuted accidentally <laughs> while I was just finishing saying <laughs> okay. something. I was just saying I'm just gonna just gonna tell you what to do soon as, as stuff starts to heat up, of course. You'll need to get your double queen out, get out two Zerglings to go scout, check that you're not being, you know, crazy all incoming your way. But otherwise, yeah. just pretty standard build up for now. Um, nothing too crazy. So remember, the important things that are different for you to remember is going to be to just stay on two queens, no third queen, go straight to Baneling Nest after Zergling speed, and then to get that third base down on 33 supply. And that's going to be a really solid build order for you. Get that ling speed started, looking really good. So make sure your overlord path changes. At the moment, it's going to die if you leave it in as natural. All right, so you want to be dropping that baneling nest soon. Keep on droning up. So let's send those two zerglings into his main base to go scout. And you want to get that baneling nest down right now. You need to get, you'll need to build a few zerglings because you've seen four zerglings coming across the map. 
So, and you need to send a drone down to your third right now because you've got to put that hatchery down. You can't let that get denied. Go to build an overlord. And you've got to send a drone to that third right now, even in the midst of this. Yeah. That third's already going to be a little bit delayed, but that's all right. <clears throat> so remember, from from around now, 33, 34 supply, you just want to mass Zerglings. And uh, as you get out a big wave of Zerglings, you want to push your opponent. Now, right now, he's got an Overlord that sees everything in your natural. You should never let that happen. You should always be at least shooing him away, um, using your Overlord, of course, for high ground vision. So you can build one more Overlord here to prepare for the fact that you are going to be supply blocked. And remember from here, it's just non-stop Ling Bane. Just go all in and micro your butt off. All right, guys, so I've muted my mic. Now I get to comment without distracting him. Um, really simple opening. This is stage one of learning this build order. Yeah, fuck off, bot. Ooh. All right, going to try and do some fancy stuff. He's got to send these Banelings in. So he morphed the Banelings in a pretty good spread. Oh! Missed the, missed the command there. Oh my god, his units are all on one hotkey. Oh my gosh, that's like super basic error. You see, he can only manually control things. So there's like fundamentals of Ling Bane control, which are missing. That's why it's really important for people to learn this stuff, because their basic Ling Bane control just isn't there. Like, they're just not using the proper techniques. Doesn't matter how godlike you are with a mouse, if you're trying to micro the way he is, you're never going to be able to break an opponent. Because you're just not going to be able to keep the... Pre like, you will sometimes, but you, you really shouldn't be able to. Like, just because, yeah, you're just giving him too much time. He's only able to control a few of his units at any given moment. <clears throat> and it's just not enough. Those Banelings should turn around and get those Zerglings, yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. But yeah, everything's on the same hotkey. <clears throat> so this is some big issues. If I remember correctly, I think um, when we started, he might have still only been learning how to de-hotkey units and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I remember he was saying he he does hotkey his eggs sometimes, but like not very regularly. You know, he's getting damage done. It's it's nice to have this follow-up control practice, but because he's doing it in a kind of messy way, I'm actually going to cut it short because I really don't like the way he's doing things. Um, so we actually need to hop in a unit tester. All right, pretty good so far, but this is going to drag on for a long time, so let's let's finish up now as I've already got some very important points for us. So just tap out GG, and um, I guess you can let these Banelings finish running in if you want, but <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I was like, I was like, you look like you really want to send these Banelings in. You can send them in if you want. Um, GG, well played. Uh, some stuff you did well, but when it came to the micro, you weren't hotkeying your Banelings and Zerglings separately. Um, so it really made things very difficult for you. So this is why... We're going to hop into a unit tester right now, and we are going to work on um, the technique, because the technique is the most important thing right now, which uh, you're lacking. Now, with the steel hotkeys, I can't remember, did you start using those at all? Uh, no, I, st I didn't change uh, my hotkey. I was very really focusing on the build order and uh, try to uh, uh, not have too many minerals, and uh, that's it. And, uh... Hit the timing you you told me. Uh, it's true. Okay, cool. So you haven't used your alt lock keys at all for for uh, No, but I, I was uh, I was uh, thinking about it about uh, two days ago. Um, I'm because uh, uh, I'm trying to master uh, what you told me uh, to do uh, against Terran and uh, Protoss. So I said now I can uh, go yeah. to the next stage and add that keys. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so this should be. This should be good. This is a good example of us to do that. So with the control group stealing, um, you know, the default is like alt, I believe, or something like that. Everyone's hotkey setup is different. I don't want to spend, you know, half of today talking about options. That's for you to decide. Um, 
you know? Oh, the Stealing Oak Key group, uh, I used yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I use it. Uh, Okay, oh. I, I, no, okay. Uh, I, uh, I thought because you said uh, I should use more uh, hotkey for my army ah. and maybe use a key that I don't use, uh, like uh, um, the one uh, just uh, on the left of the one uh, that I never use. And uh, I was thinking about using it, but the steel group uh, hotkey, I use it, yeah. Fantastic. All right, so. Um, Okay, so you get the red units, um, he gets the blue units. Check that you guys can control them. Okay. So the banelings should always be on a separate hotkey. The easiest thing is to just box them or control click and steal them onto your second army hotkey. So one Zerglings, two Banelings. Now obviously those hotkeys might not be one and two depending on your own hotkey setup, but you get the idea. You always need to have them yeah. on separate hotkeys. So um, for now, just take the Lings and let's practice morphing Banes and stealing them onto your second hotkey. So, um, you're controlling the right-hand side or the left? Uh, the left. You're the left, okay. So just grab your Zerglings just grab and just zerglings. Morph, morph, two morph two Banelings. Select the Banelings, select steal them onto number two. two. Once again, morph two yeah. Banelings. Banelings. Select them, select steal them onto number two. This seems repetitive, this seems pointless, this seems boring. Do it 20 times in a row. <laughs> mechanical, okay. mechanical muscle memory. Let's start to build that muscle memory now. Just, just, yep, over and over again. Fantastic, beautiful. Just a tiny little bit of repetitive practice here is going to pay dividends. And um, Machine Gun hopefully is doing the same thing as well. So I'll reset and you guys can keep doing it. Same again. Morph two Banes, steal them. Morph two Banes, steal them. Get that muscle memory down. you guys watching on the stream, if you don't know what control group stealing is, check out the link, which I'm putting in chat for you all. On control group stealing, that explains what it is. Do it. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I actually replaced my regular hotkeys with the steal hotkeys, so every time I group anything, I'm stealing it, which is, is pretty nice for me. All right, how you feeling? All right, how you feeling? Yeah, that's okay. Awesome. Okay, so now um, let's... Um, sorry, let me go back, actually. I'm going to um, just clear. Okay, so now, um, now let's imagine... Now let's imagine we're um, making an attack. So we want to morph them spread out in a row or uh, in, a, in a column. Um, same as what you, you were doing when you were assaulting him. You know how you morph your banelings spread out out front yeah. of his base? Yeah. So let's do that same thing. Morph like six or eight banelings. Select them separately. Uh, like steal them separately. And then I want you to be sending them in. So you want to imagine a target location. And once your banelings are morphed and hotkeyed, you want to click them into that target lotion, uh, location, imagining where those drones are. So. Okay. Uh, just to be sure I understand, um, I, I uh, when I morph one, I, I just put uh, put it in the second hotkey, or uh, I should just morph six banelings and put them in a six, separate hotkey. Yeah, key. six banelings all at six once. Yeah. Okay. So just show us how you do that. Obviously, it's a little bit weird in this map because they instantly morph. Yeah, they morph. But, but um, that's okay. You know what? So I'm also going to make it a little bit more of a realistic scenario. Um... <laughs> um, okay, there we go. And I'm going to give... Uh, oops, 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 oops. 
Um, and I'm also just going to take control of his units. So I will take control of his units now. Oh, whoops, that's your units. There we go. Okay, so I'm setting up a... Basically, I want you to do that same thing with morphing your banelings in a row, pot keying them separately. And um, because you want them to be nice and spread out, you want them to come in and... You basically just want to move command them into my mineral line, same as you would in a regular game. Because that way, your banelings will stay spread out. So, you see my banelings? Imagine you've morphed your banelings out, spread out like mine are. If I click them into the drones, notice they stay spread out because they're in that yep. nice formation. And that's going to allow you to just not even have to micro the banelings because they're automatically going to go in in a good formation, right? And then only as you get to the drone line do you give them orders. So watch what I do here. I'm going to go... Shift right click or shift attack click on those... On those banelings, uh, on those drones, so that the banelings don't blow up. But right up until that point, your only micro is making sure your zerglings try to pick off by banelings. You avoid your zerglings running in, and you just generally get that all organized. So whenever you're ready, get it going. Uh, but they still uh, morph instantly. That's all right. Like, do, okay. do, do they keep the move command when they finish morphing? Yeah, they don't keep the move uh, command, so yeah, that's no. fine. So you can still you can still organize it pretty easily. So you should be microing your zerglings. So let's try that one more time. So the idea is, once you click them in, your bane your banelings don't need to be microed. So you can micro your zerglings as much as you want, and then. As the banelings get to the drone line, that's when you give them those shift commands. You queue up commands to just blow up drones to make sure they go for the important drone targets. Alright, not too bad. Obviously, I wish, I wish we had an even bigger space to work with, so you had a little bit more time to, to prepare and everything. But this is actually um, so, so important and useful. Um, oh, thank you so much, TLO. Very nice. You see that shift click always guarantees you're going to be getting yeah. those money shots. So in a, in a game, often you've got more space to work with. So there's a longer period between you clicking in the mineral line where you're microing your zerglings around, you're trying to dodge the banelings. So let's try and make sure you're moving your zerglings up as well in tandem with the banelings. So at the same time, I want your zerglings to be trying to poke around. You don't need to necessarily get much done with them, but I just want you to get used to that rhythm of microing both at once. So try it one more time, but try to use your zerglings a little bit more actively. Yeah, starting to get the hang of it a little bit more there. Awesome. So I made too much banelink. <laughs> yeah, about about twenty six banelings there. That's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, all right, one more time, and then we can go back into the the hands on practicing game. Good job. Good job. You got it. Awesome. Let's hop out. So let's play another game here against Machine Gun. Um, and this should be Sook. I really like King Sejong for like a non-stop laying Bane all in because the third base is spread out a little bit. Um, it can still be defended a bit, but this just seems like a good map to practice it. So hop out of there and that should be fantastic. So make sure you go Zerg. Swap to Zerg. 
Bat on it has decided that you want to play Terran. I don't know why it no, why no. it does that. I hit Terran. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know why Battle.net just resets it sometimes. It's like, come on, man. I played Zerg the last 40 custom games. You think you'd remember? Anyways, um, good luck, man. I'm going to let you just focus on that build order. So remember, same opening you do. Just drop the Baneling Nest at 50 gas after the Zergling speed. Get the third hatchery down. 32, 33 supply about there. And then just go non-stop Zergling, Baneling from about 33, 34 supply. Backstage when I pump up. Good luck, have fun, man. All right, I'm going to mute my microphone now. Sorry about the echo, guys. It is getting really annoying, I know. Um, I do want to say a big thanks, guys. Al Kavitz, Marilex, uh, Cash Car Zero, Rookson, Rookson. Um, thank you for the follows, Rookson, of course, for the sub as well. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Uh, Andy Gundy and Triple Helix also subbed before as well. Andy Gundy, thanks for the follow, mate. Appreciate that. Triple Helix, of course. Thanks for your subbing. Um, I appreciate everyone who hopped over from TLO stream. I love how it's like, TLO just hosted you for 28 viewers. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there was more people than 28 watching his um, watching his stream. And I see our viewer count's going up quite a lot there. So thank you guys who've hopped over. Um, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be doing Zerg uh, ladder starting in about half an hour. Um, at the moment, I'm coaching Lilu here, who has really good ZVZ win rate. He's in Diamond 3. He's playing up against a Diamond uh, Diamond 2 or Diamond 1 player here in uh, Shaggy or, or Machine Gun, as we call him from chat. Um, so Lilu's good Zerg versus win rate, win rate has come from 13-12. It's come from doing early pool, all-ins, or 14-14, basically just rushing his opponents with one base Ling Bane and getting free wins. Um, so now he's trying to learn quote-unquote macro. What we've got to remember is ZVZ macro is very special and very peculiar because it's crazy aggressive. So um, I'm giving him my guide to learn more macro-oriented When play. should I do the bending, uh, the bending nest? Just whenever you've got the money after your Zergling speed. So okay. about so 2 minutes 40, 2 minutes 50 uh, is usually when it goes down. But make sure you get your Ling speed first. So guys, I just linked the build in chat um, if you guys want to see it. Uh, ZVZ Ling Bane into Roach play. It's an aggressive guide. Backstage when I pump up. And it, it actually has three stages of learning in it. So we're focusing on the first stage now, which is make sure you learn good Ling Bane micro. And the way to do that is just to do a three hatch Ling Bane all in. Just go relentless oh, waves of Ling Bane. Oh, yeah. Hey, Woody, thank you so much for the host, mate. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you very much. Wow, all the hosts today. There's been so many events on, um, on TL this morning, actually. So that's cool. Probe says, where do you put the Baneling Nest? Um, me personally, lately I've always been favoring exactly where he put it here, with that nice gap to wedge a queen in. But it's a bit down to personal preference. You could create like a bit of a wall with the ramp, and that's that's legit as well. So he's gone for the Baneling Nest. He's now dropping the hatch. He's got to drop an Overlord as well. So i got to remind him of that, because he's still very new to this. So remember the Overlord after the hatchery? Yep. And about two more drones, and after that, just non-stop Ling Bane. So that Overlord's really important because what you have is these Lava Injects pop. He's got to keep his Injects going. Oof, missed an Inject on his natural. It's nasty. That's nasty. Hey, thanks for the follow. So, um, and basically you get your, your Baneling Nest with your first 50 gas after Ling Speed. This is off a hatch first opening. He's going pool before gas, but I normally go gas before pool, personal preference. Um, you then get a third base on 33, you build an Overlord, and from there it's just non-stop Ling Bane from like... I don't know, what, what did I say in the guide? I think in the guide I say 34 supply. Yeah, 34 supply, but anywhere between 32 and 34 supply, just non-stop Ling Bane production. So this is going to be a good counter from, um, from Captain Shaggy here. Captain Machine Gun does catch a few Zerglings there, slows down the Baneling morph. The big thing we just worked on in the unit tester was Lulu actually hotkeying his Banelings and Zerglings separately, but just there we saw that his Banelings actually weren't microed at all. And I've told him, just click the Banelings pre-spread into the mineral line. But he reclumped his Banelings, and now he's, he's wasting a lot of APM microing this. So he's um, in a bit of an awkward position right now. His Banelings are like all over the place. On the plus side, he's getting used to microing in multiple locations. Going for the third mineral line makes no sense. There's never going to be drones there. 
All right, you're staring at those banelings a bit much. Remember, you just click them into the mineral line and you only micro them once they get to the mineral line. All of your focus should be on the rest of your zerglings, morphing more banelings, continuing to reinforce and making those zerglings take good engagements. So you're not meant to stare at those banelings. You're literally meant to morph them, hotkey them separately and just click them into the mineral line. Let's see, where, is he, where did he click these banelings? He's only clicked them there. That's a huge mistake because look, now they're all gonna clump up and they're just gonna sit there. Whoa, why is he shift clicking like that? I don't think he understood the shift clicking. You're only meant to shift click on the drones once you're in the mineral line. You're not meant to shift click like that. Oh no. No, <laughs> no, Banelings spread. Please Banelings spread. <laughs> uh, it's all right, that's all right. I gotta be patient because He's been one basing for so long, he's not used to handling this many units and this much production behind it. So it's just gonna take a few games for him to find his rhythm. It seems really mundane telling someone to Ling Bane all in as a path to learning macro and Zerg vs Zerg, but like the fact is most people's Ling Bane control is atrocious and it's not through them lacking the mouse control. It's through number one, them not being practiced in the situation, but most of all, it's them using really bad techniques for how they hotkey their units and how they, can, how they choose to micro the units. Um, whereas if you just follow a few simple rules, you can actually always use your units correctly. Like here, he's microing the banelings again because they're not pre-spread. And this is why his zerglings aren't able to be microed at the same time. Pros don't micro two or three things at once. They take turns microing two or three oh, things by having them well yeah. planned and spaced out. And that's one of the big misconceptions people have. like, oh, well, pro gamers have the multitasking. Like, pro gamers don't have multitasking. No one has multitasking. Multitasking isn't even a thing. Like, okay, it can be argued that multitasking is a thing. That shift click is really bad. I've got to get him to stop doing that. Um, that's, that's the biggest problem right now. But um, yeah, multitasking is not really nearly as important as having your units kind of organized in the right manner so that you can easily bounce between the tasks without getting punished for not looking at the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, spread these banelings out. I don't get this shift click, man. He's totally misunderstood what I was saying. Alright, so with those banelings, you, you don't need to queue up any command. You just want to click them into the mineral line. You don't need to use shift. It's just once they get there, you want to use shift to make sure they blow up multiple drones rather than just killing the first drone you click on and then ignoring their command. So you're doing really well here, really good engagements. Just you've got to make sure that with those banelings, whenever you morph them, you, um, you do that. So he's held it now, he's got roaches. So let's tap out and let's try this one more time. GG. All right, so. So, now you're out of game, you're out of that crazy hectic situation. Um, try not to, sorry, the echo is getting really bad. Are you holding down your push to talk? No, no, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have push to talk, but uh, okay. I can uh, reduce the sensitivity. Okay, do you reckon you could just put the push to talk on just because the echo is getting really hard? Yeah, uh, So go back into that cog just underneath. And um, if you could put push to talk on, that would be fantastic. It's on push to talk now. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, cool. So number one thing is with those banelings, when you morph them, you wanna just click them into the mineral line. The, the whole reason for talking about shift click is once they get to the mineral line, you wanna tell them to blow up these drones and then this clump of drones and then this clump of, dr clump of drones, right? Cause say you've got eight banelings in the mineral line. If you just right click on a drone, they'll kill that one drone and then the rest of them won't have an order. So they'll just blow up on the queen, right? They'll just like go and blow up on a single zergling. So only once they get to the mineral line, do you want to shift click the banelings on the drones? Does that make sense? Make sure you press the push to talk button. Oh yeah, I was talking. No worries, I, it's always awkward uh, when you swap yeah. from one to the other. Yeah, yeah I feel you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's totally makes sense. And uh, it's gonna be easier to, uh, to micro if I, if I just put them in the mineral line. Yeah. I will have more time to, to manage my links. Exactly. So I could already see you starting to get the beginnings of the rhythm down, but it's something where um, 
it just needs a bit more practice. Yeah, the Bane links, just, just click them into the drone line and then you can manage the links uh, and try to micro, uh, try to morph the Bane links pre-spread out a little bit more because a lot of the time your Bane links were very clumped up. So morph the Bane links and remember the moment you steal them, click them in the mineral line. Because what you're often doing okay. is you're morphing them, you're clicking them like right in front of where they are, then you're microing your Zerglings and then you look back and they've all just moved to a point on the ground and clumped up. Whereas if you do it all at once, morph banelings, steal them onto number two, click in the mineral line, you don't need to look at them until they get to the mineral line. And it just means all your focus can be on your zerglings, bringing, morphing more banelings, adding them to the hotkey, and just kind of microing the active units. And really, like because your banelings are pre-spread then, you only need to focus on your zerglings, and you only need to look at the banelings as they get to the drone line, and they'll just automatically trade really well. So that should be pretty awesome. Okay, let's try it. All right. This is something where you can practice Ling Bane Micro for years and years, and there's always still so much room for improvement. But what we're focusing on here is just getting that good organization of it to make it a lot easier for you. So it's going to give you a much more solid base to be more consistent with this. So um, your opening uh, execution is good. Keep it up. Just focus on you know clicking those banelings like that, and you should smash it this time. Good luck, man. Jailer chef. <laughs> Shaggy, <laughs> he's like, man, I just have to get Ling Bane all in every game. This is really bloody stressful. But we uh, we thank him for his sacrifice for the the greater good of Zerg vs Zerg. Yeah, if you go like a seventeen pool straight after your hatch, rather than going eighteen gas then seventeen pool, um, it's actually really nice. Jensen says, Pig, remind me what the best way to pre-split Banes was. Is that that you have all your Zerglings selected while running forward and then click Morph Bane Hotkey with a little pause between each click? Absolutely, Jensen, that's it. So your Zerglings will be running along. Say they're running from here to here. So your Zerglings are running, and as they're running, you just tap Baneling, 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 and as the column of Zerglings run, Baneling will morph, Baneling will morph, Baneling will morph, Baneling will morph. Or you can go Baneling, 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 Baneling. So two Banelings morph, two Banelings morph, two Banelings morph. As long as you don't have your banelings clumped up in more, groups of more than two, your opponent can never trade efficiently uh, or never trade positively in, um, in baneling versus baneling. Only their queens and spines and individual zerglings picking off banelings will actually have any chance of them being efficient. Um, so if they don't have an anchor up, like a couple of queens and a spine at the front, if you simply follow this technique, you will always trade aggressively with ling bane versus ling bane. Unless you're playing against a microbot. <laughs> where they can individually split a Zergling onto every Baneling instantaneously, <laughs> which is never going to happen. Uh, Octopus Grimy, thanks for the host, mate. Glompan says, how do you defend properly with this build versus 13-12, assuming you do not drone scout? Well, with any hatch first, if you, you, if you, it comes down to your own level of micro. Um, personally, I like with any hatch first build to just pull off gas the moment I see an early pull and just build queens, zerglings, and I immediately build a spine crawler on the edge of creep and move that down to the natural as soon as it finishes. And I just pull drones to help defend the hatchery. Um, drones, if I pull like 14 drones or so, I can easily fight the first uh, eight zerglings. And then once they get 10 Zerglings, I've got my own Zerglings popping out and I can usually fight it off. It comes down to a lot of micro, you know, getting your Queens on the ramp straight away, getting your Spine on the low ground. Because I don't even start Zergling speed or I cancel Zergling speed, I've got plenty of minerals so I can afford to keep building lots of Queens and so on. Um, there's a few different ways you can handle it though, based on your own, your own micro and how you prefer to defend early pools with your uh, 13 gas 12 pool. Sneaky Zerglings, sneaky Zerglings. You better be paying attention to that. Come on, man. Come on. Please tell me he was paying attention to that. There's two Zerglings in your main base. He went and hid two Zerglings in a corner of your main base. Should have noticed that. You should sacrifice those Zerglings. Sacrifice the Zerglings. Four Zerglings is worth it to, to make sure these Banelings don't kill four or five drones. 
Uh, I'm, I'm muted, so he can't hear me, by the way, guys. I don't actually shout at people like that while, while I'm coaching them. <laughs> as much as I want to sometimes. Um, that's something where you need a lot of experience to make that snap judgment. There we go. The Baneling pre-morph there was way better. And, unfortunately, he still hasn't clicked them into the mineral line, though. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hot key, hot key, hot key. There we go. There we go. He's doing it, guys. He's morphed them, and he's clicking them in the mineral line. Ignore the fact that the Zerglings are on top of this, and they're wrecking it. He's actually doing this, where he can focus on his Zerglings now. And look at that. Wasn't even watching. Got a good Zergling trade, because he's putting more pressure on, even without looking at it. His unit's clumped a little bit there. A little bit of nice manual micro. Click in the mineral line. Click in the mineral line. Now focus on the Zerglings. Let's swap to his camera. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disrupt his rhythm. Right now he does really need to inject, but I'd rather he just focus on the aggressive micro for now. Get used to doing that. And then he'll do well. He spread out his banelings too much there, so he just spent a long time panning to try and select them all. But he's starting to get the hang of it. So he's 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 getting there. I think today is gonna be a session purely on Ling Bane aggression. Because I think just sitting here practicing this and me pointing out all the little things he can do to improve is going to take him to another level. This is something you could... I, I recommend if you're learning this style to do at least 10 or 15 games, but usually sometimes even 30, 40, 50 games of just this sort of Ling Bane all in to really get your micro on point because learning how to execute this aggressively will also teach you how to defend this. Hey guys, yeah, it's 8... It's 8.50 in the morning. I normally start at 7 a.m. my time. Well, I say normally. That's what the schedule says. I normally probably, probably just as often uh, don't start on the scheduled time. But uh, when, I'm, when I'm on schedule, I start at 7 a.m. The rare times that that does happen. What are you doing with these banes? Clicking the mineral line. You can use the minimap as well for clicking in the mineral line there, and it, it makes a big difference. He just lost a lot of his reinforcing circlings. So... What we're noticing here is he stares too long at one type of unit. So I'm going to start writing some notes here to talk to him about after this game. And I think one of the biggest things here is going to be understanding how to give yourself more time. So understanding how to give yourself more time so you can multitask. You're actively microing Zerglings. There's Banelings nearby. So you can't look away. But you need to morph more Banes. You need to inject. You need to control those Banelings in that mineral line. How the shit? How the hell do you find the time to go and do that? without being a pro gamer. You're just not fast enough, right? Wrong! You sign up for my 12-step package, you're gonna find out how to do this like a pro gamer without even being fast at StarCraft. Um, just kidding, of course. The most important thing is giving yourself time. Just pull the lings back. <laughs> <laughs> two screens worth so you know you have 10 to 15 seconds before you need to look at them again. If they aren't doing crucial damage right then, they can't be more important than injecting, producing, morphing more banes, and so on. Just pull them back. That's it. Like, that's the secret to getting your aggressive multitasking going. And this is the same with Terran drops. It's the same with a Protoss who's harassing with a, a Warp Prism somewhere and a, an army poking at the front. It's... Oh! I can't stare at these units anymore. I'll see if we find an example. If your units are here, click them here. Click them back there. Go back, do all your macro tasks, and then when you've got the APM, you come back and you go back in with them when you've got time to look at them. So it's about passing up your APM to when you actually have the time available to focus on what you need to focus on. 
And that's one of the things which definitely takes a bit of experience to get used to. But if you're consciously focusing on finding those moments and getting that rhythm down, you will improve at it so much faster than somebody who just says, oh, I just can't keep up. This is just too hard, which is the most common response I come across from people. And what, um, if you haven't really thought about it in that sense, it's very easy to make that, that mistake in your understanding. So, you know, I definitely understand where that comes from. Curious to see where his um, rally points are. Where are they? out there that's good that's where i like to put my rally points and then you know not hotkey my eggs in this situation and just kind of manually bring them in so that's something else i should write um don't hotkey new zerglings um don't always hotkey so it takes practice but manually controlling your lings is huge. Oh, no, 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 Zerglings. Spread. <laughs> good, good control from him there. Good control. Um, so it takes practice, but manually controlling your lings is huge. Um, this way, you can have your hotkey of lings in the main base. And still, um, and, and not accidentally run your reinforce of 30 lings into a bane ling while not watching. So just set the rally point outside their base and when you have the spare APM morph more banes there and bring the lings in. This also allows you to hit multiple areas at once and really pull your opponent apart. He actually started to kill a decent number of drones here and, you know, really do some sick damage. This is a really cute little, little SimCity up there, by the way. Um, but that's cool. GG, well played. Big improvements this time, man. Much, much stronger performance. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, t tap on out. But, um, no, it's... it's it always feels bad when you lose a game, but you're not meant to be winning these games. Number one, he knows you're going to Ling Bane all in, so obviously he's going to play a little bit safer than he might otherwise. Number two, he's 500 MMR higher than you. That is a big gap. Number three, you're just getting used to this, and you're, just ch you're literally, for the first time, doing things in a different way which you haven't done before, which means brand new, fresh muscle memory, aka almost no muscle memory. So it's something which is just taking a bit of getting used to for you to uh, get comfortable with this and, and really start to get in your groove. However, you're getting so much better that game at morphing the bailing spread out and then clicking them into the drone line. That already was helping out a lot. There was one or two moments early where you accidentally morphed the banelings so spread apart that it actually took you a while to, to select them all. Um, if, you want, yeah. <laughs> if you want to, you can use the bottom display bar. You can control click the banelings in your bottom display bar and then steal them onto the hotkey if, if that's easier. Um, it's different for different players. Some people prefer to control click on screen or box them. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, you're getting a lot better there. Um, just keep doing the same. One more game of the same. I've got a few other things to talk to you about, but we're going to talk to you about them after that one more game because I really want you to get a bit more hands-on practice here. Um, actually you know really feeling the situation out because you're already improving game to game i don't want to overload you with other things to think about for now just do what you were doing one more time and um, really focus on on getting in the, the comfort zone while you execute this i missed uh, a lot of inject uh, early and uh, i think uh, if i didn't mess uh, messed up with the those inject it would be better yeah i guess we can talk about one little thing then which is Whenever you need to do other things, just pull your Zerglings away. So you know how when you were missing your injects, you were staring at your Zerglings for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds, and they weren't really getting much damage done, but you were missing inject time and you weren't morphing Banelings with your reinforcing Zerglings. So if you ever know that you need to do other things, don't be afraid to just click your Zerglings back on the minimap to run away really far, even two, three, four screens away so that you know that you can look away from your Zerglings and they're not going to blow up on a Baneling. 
So that's going to give okay. you the, the time and the APM to inject, to morph more banelings. And then when you've got the time, you can look back at those zerglings. Maybe they've pulled back to halfway across the map. And then you can go back in with those zerglings because you've got the, the APM and the focus and the time to micro them. So don't be afraid to pull back with the zerglings ever. Um, you know, banelings, you never need to pull back. Just keep clicking those in those drone lines. Even if you're not doing anything at the same time, it creates so much pressure. It can force a lot of mistakes. But every now and then, if you're really stressed for APM, just pull those zerglings back, do what you need to do, and then go back in with them. Okay. Awesome, man. All right, you're getting way better. So uh, good luck. Have fun. Kick some ass, mate. Gonna win this time. <laughs> Hells yeah. Frozen Temple, a little bit of a smaller map. Um, so this one can get really chaotic. Good luck, man. Yeah. Alright. GG. Hey guys, we can actually put some music on now as, now as well, since um, the daily's done and everything, and I'm not talking all that much, so... Ooh, what do we want to listen to? There's so many good stations to play. Um, let's start up a little bit of... A couple, couple of reggae covers. How's the music volume? You guys still hear me okay? Lompan says, it feels like you get behind by wasting mining time fighting with workers. I probably overreact. Um, if, yeah, the thing is, if you pull drones to fight at the natural and then you lose the natural, then you're way behind. But if you keep the natural alive, then you're in a good position. You're not meant to, as long as you don't lose too many drones. If you lose seven or eight drones and you've been fighting at the natural, losing mining time, that's really bad. But if you only lose two or three drones and you keep the natural alive, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Works out really well, Glumpan. Oh, Crash Your Desktop. Thank you so much for the sub, mate. Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Hey, Chanel's. Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's X5 underscore pig to, to tag me, by the way. He said, why don't you give him tips while he's in-game? Saying the tips you want in real-time action. I think it would be good at least the way I want to be coached. Um, and keep reminding him what to do. Like, tell him to inject, pull Zerg, Glings back, and macro instead. Thing is, that doesn't really help players. Um, there are a few players who do enjoy that sort of coaching. 90% of the time, it doesn't help. Because... Most players get distracted and they get thrown off their own internal rhythm. So even though they'll start to do some things better, it, in my experience, and I've been coaching for years and years now, um, I'd say maybe 10% of players actually benefit from that. And the 90% of players just play worse because I'm like, inject, inject, do this. And it interrupts their own rhythm and their train of thought. And StarCraft is very much a game about getting into that rhythm. And it's also about recognizing when you need to do things. Baneling Nest. So just because your Baneling Nest is delayed won't get you killed. But it does make uh, you know potential timing be a little bit delayed. But that's all right. You can still play this out. Good luck, man. Okay. So about 24, 25 drones is where you want to stop. Pump those zerglings, non-stop zerglings, man. Spend that lava, keep those injects and overlords going. You can still play this out. Banely Nest is almost done in about 15 seconds. All right, so I'm just going to let him get in his own rhythm now. If people make an obvious mistake or there's something really big they're missing, then I'll tell them what to do. But otherwise, I want people to, to play the game as they would on ladder and learn how to direct their own self-improvement and give them the techniques and tools to do that. Um, also, I guess it's because my coaching is kind of expensive. So I don't want to just... 
be the guy telling them what to do because that coaching is never as time efficient uh, efficient in terms of how much knowledge you get out of it. All right, these Zerglings are going super yolo. Oh, that Baneling, the Baneling gets a nice hit. So he can just A move these Lings and he should be looking elsewhere. Oh, great hit there. It's pretty good, pretty good. But he's got to look back now. Let's, let's look at his multitask. Inject, inject. Keep building the Zerglings. He's doing a pretty good job, man. Just keep going, keep going. Get on the drone line, get on the drone line. Don't kill the Baneling Nest. I am, I am muted, so he can't hear me right now. Uh, I think he's broken him. I think he's done it. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Zerg! Yeah! <laughs> Alright! <laughs> awesome, man. That was sick. That was sick. Well done. Um, yeah, thank you. You dived into the main base. Which is really great. Like, there's there's always unlimited things you can improve. I think, like, Life is one of the few Zerg players where you, I would watch him and be like, oh, there's actually very little criticism I have for your Ling Bane versus Ling Bane. But, um, but he played, uh, you know, he was he was a, a god. So, um, you played really well there. You, you stepped it up a notch. And I liked how you kind of, you morphed those Banelings in the main. You still maybe hovered on those Zerglings in the main slightly too long, but like generally you were like, okay, there's not much more I can do in the main. Morph some Banelings, A, move them, bounce back to your base, inject, inject. Morph more Banelings in the front, go back to controlling your army. Like I really love that rotation you started to get there. You got that rhythm going and you could see in the pressure it created, you know, your Banelings started to do their own job. You weren't even watching it. But you know how you ran up the ramp with his Zerglings and you had one Baneling coming in just behind? That Baneling killed like 12 Zerglings. You weren't even watching it. That's just what happens yeah, when I you click your Banelings it. in. Exactly. Yeah. And l later, two of your Banelings came in and killed like five of his Banelings in his natural. You weren't even watching. But this is what happens when you create pressure. Your opponent needs like five times as much APM as you to, to deal with everything, right? And if they make a mistake, bam, you're in the drone line. Everything dies. You make a mistake, yeah, you lose some units. You take a bad trade, but it's on their side of the map. Your economy doesn't die suddenly. You've got more waves to try and still make your, your victory happen. So um, this is actually such a big part of becoming solid at Zerg vs. Zerg is learning how to execute these attacks really well. And then in hindsight, learning how to defend them realizing how leaving a baneling on top of your ramp stops someone diving up the ramp with those zerglings like you did that game so you start to put in these little little safety things which stop this sort of play from working when you swap into more macro oriented play um this is something you can do for like 50 games though um you know we are we are coming towards the end of the time now so let's say a big thanks to machine gun i really think you guys should keep playing games by the way yeah thank you Mich um thanks so much machine gun you guys should add friends and play a few uh, a few more Ling Bane Wars. Um, you know, try a few different maps out on the pool and, and just kind of keep getting in that rhythm. Um, bouncing between your units is way better. Your hot king, your banelings, and clicking them to the drone line. Big improvement there. Uh, so generally, just continuing to improve on that is fantastic. And like I said, really don't be afraid to overuse this, this style and really practice it a crazy amount. Um, but once you do feel comfortable with it, that's when you can move on to stage two of that build order. Um, actually, we'll link in chat one more time for anyone who wasn't here at the start of that coaching session. Um, and that's when you can start transitioning into roaches, hitting a big roach bane timing or a roachling ravager timing. And that's also where you will, uh, you know, find yourself going slightly deeper with the build, but still trying to finish the game with an all-in. And as you learn these all-ins at these different stages, you, you kind of evolve to the level where you can defend and stop those all-ins as well because you understand how they work. And then you can start going to a, a quote-unquote full macro build, um, which maybe in a few months' time or something like that. Don't, don't rush to try to play defensive macro Zerg versus Zerg. Even a lot of pro gamers are just playing very aggressive at the moment because it's so fast-paced. Okay, okay, that's good because now I have three builds uh, versus three rates uh, that I can work. Hell's yeah, man! Um, that's awesome. So you guys had a uh, had a good game there. He's gonna go get some dinner. No worries. Okay, cool. 
All right, I'm going to hop back on um, NA and play some Zerg ladder myself in just a minute. But uh, yeah, good session. Uh, hit me up whenever you want to set up another one. Um, how much did we have left? I'll just double check. Uh, we did three sessions, so we have two left. All right. Let me just mark that down. Yep, that's correct. Up to date with my records, which is good. Fantastic. All right, man. Um, well, have a great night, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, thanks, you too. Cheers, mate. I'll see you later. And GLHF. GLHF, let's go.